a few times, a few times, is a end credit sequence in an animated feature as important as this one, 2022 DC's League of Super Pets. This is the movie that has the major pets of the major heroes of the DC universe. Heck, even Lex Luthor has a pet. But the end credit sequence, it folds right into the internet, right into Twitter, right into internet lore, battles and wars and comments. It's everything Zack Snyder of his DC work. It's everything of Dwayne Johnson and The Rock's Black Adam. This is one significant end credit sequence that never was fulfilled. I want to analyze this. I want to talk about exactly what happens at the end of the Super Pets. I can't believe I'm saying that out loud. We're talking the Super Pets, we're talking the end credits, and we're talking Black Adam. Quiet on the set! Camera speed, sound production, take one. Action! So the, the, the wild thing is, I remember, it might have been Shrek. It was Shrek or Toy Story that had these outtakes. And it was so much fun to sit in the theater and just watch these outtakes after the movie. I remember something about Mary, everyone dancing to that Buttercup song. Super, a lot of fun, right? Like, great feeling when you're getting up to, to leave the theater. And then the end credit thing happened. It happened. I know people, well, you want to say Masters of the Universe, Skeletor at the end says, I'll be back. There's there's all their end credit sequences. There, there's a little bit of back and forth of which one was, was the first one. But it was really Iron Man, Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., Samuel Jackson. It was just internet rumored that Nick Fury was going to pop in and say something. And then we had the Incredible Hulk. And this is the one that really solidified it. The Ed Norton Incredible Hulk movie. Where we were told that we would be told the Avengers will be formed. Which does happen. General Ross bumps into Tony Stark or finds Tony Stark at a bar. Very on character. And they mention the Avengers initiative. And then from that point on, major movies shifted. The tent poles, the blockbusters, the films you wanted to see, not the films you were forced to see because they were they were nominated for Academy Awards or Academy Award fodder, and you had to uh, pretend you wanted to see them and like them, right? We're talking <laughs> we're talking movies like Driving Miss Daisy. So cinema movie movie going and the film going experience shifted into a complete experience. Just for example, this movie. Let's just imagine, and I have a close friend, actually a close friend I'm catching a couple football games with today. He takes his daughter. It's a daytime movie. They live near a nice big movie theater. I'm, I'm just going to say Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Some of you out there might be familiar with Cherry Hill, New Jersey. It's a major town in the Garden State. And the kids' movie, the children's movie available, is DC League of Super Pets. Super Pets is hyphen, by the way. But you're taking your kid to see a kid's movie. And you get a complete opening credit sequence. That introduces you to some of the characters, the concepts, and maybe the overall feeling of the movie. And then we get engaged into the movie. Lots of characters, lots of situations, but a lot of fun. It's a little bit of someone's brain getting cracked open, spilled in front of you, and you're just entertained for it. You're entertained by the character design, the cells, the... Uh, the texture mapping, some of the cell shading, some of the script writing, some of the jokes, but you're overly entertained. And then we get into the end credit sequence. The end credit sequence is a little boom, like a little, we start the credits, 
And for this movie, the credits are completely designed. They're amazing credits, by the way. So we get a couple of those. We get a couple names. Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart, and then boom, end credit sequence. We expand the story. And then you wait till the very end of the credits. And you get another final credit sequence. So one's called mid-credit, one's called end-credit. The end credit sequence for this movie introduces Anubis. And Anubis is the dog. The what uh, Anubis is designed, by the way, is heart stopping. It's it's so dead on, it's so perfect. It just, some things are so perfect it hurts. Like the Jordan 4. And Anubis pitches the anti-hero to Crypto. But then we have a standoff against Black Adam. Black Adam is in this scene with Superman. This directly correlates and echoes a followed 2022 tease where the end credit sequence for Black Adam showed a hologram of Superman teased by that girl, that suicide girl, Wanda. What's her name? Waller, Amanda Waller, teases Superman to Black Adam to keep him in check. And we're teased of a matchup, we're teased of a fight. I'm amongst the many now, because this is a growing Twitter, this is a growing (laughs) movement still on X. It's the Snyderverse, people, it's hashtag restore the Snyderverse. I'm one of the people that b- fully believe that a Dwayne Johnson, Henry Cavill, Black Adam versus Superman matchup, movie, fight would have saved everything amongst that shift. When we get into Blue Beetle, when we get into The Suicide Squad, even though uh, I don't know why, but The Suicide Squad, the second one is absolutely fantastic i mean it does have stario and it just all works and they literally at the end of the movie jump into the eyeball of a giant kaiju it's a uh, it's a fantastic movie i even backed wonder woman 2 aquaman the lost kingdom shazam fury of the gods blue beetle this is really where it hurt and it you could feel the stumble of these movies. I believe I tried to review each one of those for this this podcast. I, I, I could not do it. There were parts of those movies that I just uh, stopped watching and I never returned. All that could have been saved with the full vision of Schneider's Justice League getting released. The full four hour plus long version getting released the apocalypse teases the new gods teases the teases of the green lanterns entering into the picture all of this while the guy superman is fighting the 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 most perfect anti-hero in the the most perfect villain black adam as he was portrayed in that movie and that movie didn't really quite get a fair shake uh, to me, that movie is deeply embedded in comic book history just with the use of the Justice Society, which predates the Justice League. The whole thing with Black Adam and that statue, and that statue being his son and not him, it was such a fantastic revelation. The fights are there, the characters right there. Uh, and we have to kind of be honest that the uh, origin of Black Adam, comic book wise, it's just goofy. You have to do something with it because the visual of the character is incredible. The origin of Shazam that they got through with that first movie, they did it. That was great. Does Shazam have to match up against Black Adam? No. In this scenario, he needs. Henry Cavill. So these are all things that will never come to fruition. In 2022, we had two t- 
targeted end credit sequences to tease something much bigger that never quite caught on, but then yet again the studio had moved on from Zack Snyder's vision of the DC Universe on film. Uh, this blew me away, because I saw uh, a frame of it on Facebook or something, and I had to watch the movie. This is a, one of the great things about streaming, even though uh, I need the Mortal Kombat move, uh, animated movies on Max, and they're not available on HBO Max anymore. Ex- all, I think, except for one, or maybe two. It might, might be Snowblind and the Johnny Cage one. Uh, I hate it, by the way. Uh, I hate it when things leave stream, but I am elated when they're available. So yes, I was able to watch this movie. This movie's incredible. It's fantastic. It's so much fun. Uh, it, it just is a perfect way to introduce kids to the DC universe. Is With the Super Pets. They even somewhat crossed over into the DC Extended Universe with this. Uh, I think this movie makes an argument against a live-action crypto. Uh, I just don't want, uh, I like, for a movie that's supposed to be, like, there and serious, I, 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 I don't want my version of Superman petting a dog. That kind of communicates to him. Eh, I, sorry. <laughs> I just don't! With all of that, my AKA powders. Uh, this might be the biggest, the biggest animated end credit sequence in Hollywood history. It didn't come to fruition. It's what they would call airline-wise a near miss. But holy crap! Uh, I and I did enjoy every frame of this movie. I just think it's like I said, it's so much fun. Uh, well directed by Jared Stern. This is the guy that ended Jim Carrey's career by writing the 2011 Mr. Poppins Penguins. Mis- Mr. Jim Carrey never quite re- came back from that movie. Lego Batman, Ninjago, I'm sure Duck Bricks on YouTube knows his name. This guy is great. Uh, great storyteller. I think some of his writing writing experience comes through with this direction he also served as producer so this is his project so AK Patterson so you have a chance check out DC's League of Super Pets with the intent of staying to the very end and seeing one of the most heartbreaking end credit sequences in animated history okay that's a wrap